This is Lisa Cove with DoD Fed Globe. Today I am here with Vicki Wagner, a Air Force veteran. Hello, Vicki. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Can you tell us a little bit about your Air Force experience? Yeah, I actually can tell you a little bit. I actually went to the Air Force. I joined when I was 18. I was put on the delayed enlistment program right out of high school. And I'll say this right now, I did not know that I was gay when I joined the Air Force. As a matter of fact, I had a boyfriend. His name was Vince, Italian. I'm from Chicago. And I joined the Air Force and, you know, I had some feelings for girls, but I didn't know what that was. So I didn't consider myself gay. And back then they actually asked you, are you a homosexual? And I wasn't. So, of course, I said, no, I'm not. And I ended up going into the military. I joined in April, uh, April 12, 1989 is actually when my enlistment date was. And I went through boot camp. I got a top secret clearance. Actually, my job was a command post controller. And I actually work for SAC, which is Strategic Air Command. And if you work in SAC as a command post controller, you should know if you're in the Department of Defense that I had one of the highest military clearances that you can have. There is only about 5% of the people in the entire country who have the clearance that I had because all we did was play war games. So uh, as time went on, you know, I had a lot of boyfriends in the Air Force, actually. I mean, I was young, so I was experimenting. But at one point, I did kiss a girl, and apparently somebody saw me kiss that girl, and they reported me for it. So at the time, I was uh, at Spokane at Fairchild Air Force Base, which is a bomber base, B-52 bombers. But I was out at Car Carswell Air Force Base, which was in uh, Dallas, uh, sorry, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. It's not there anymore. I was there for training. And as soon as I came back from that training, I was immediately taken and told that I was getting put under investigation. And I'm like, for what? And they're like, for homosexuality. And I'm like... And still in my mind, I'm like, I'm not a homosexual. I'm like, okay, put me under investigation. What happened to me is I got my top secret clearance taken away from me. I got my pay grade reduced. I got taken out of my job. I got put down to work with other criminals who were actually getting kicked out of the military for actual criminal defenses. I mean, offenses. And for nine months, they investigated me because they could never prove that I was a homosexual. My only saving grace in all of this time was that uh, the commander of the 92nd Bomb Wing, which is Captain Marie Bunky, was having a baby. Um, I mean, her secretary was, they were both having babies. Her secretary was having a baby too. And so she needed a secretary. So for three months out of that nine months, I got to go work underneath of Captain Marie Bun Bunky in the 92nd Bomb Wing. And she got a chance to get to know me. Well, soon thereafter, we got a new first sergeant who was a complete jerk, and he hated homosexuals and said to me, uh, if you're a homosexual, I don't want you working here, blah, blah, blah. And he actually kicked me out of the squadron, and I had to go work with now doing things like scrubbing toilets every single day, shoveling the snow every day, because at Fairchild, they have what's called fog dispersal. It's kind of in a valley, and so when the bombers and the planes, the KC-135 tankers come down, it's always foggy, so they shoot propane up into the air, and it comes down as snow almost. So every single day it snows. So I had to go every single day and shovel the snow that was the fog dispersal. And honestly, I did it for eight hours a day, and my hands would bleed every single day because I was shoveling with the shovel. Then I had to go around. Now, this is from a top secret clearance with the general on the base knowing me for my first name to cleaning other people's crap out of their toilets. That's what I got kicked down to. So my investigation continued. I got, you know, the OSI kept on badgering me. Are you gay? Who else is gay? I lost all of my friends. Nobody wanted to be my friend because they were afraid to be around me. Um, and uh, just one horrible thing after another. I mean, I almost wanted to kill myself. It got to be so bad. It was such a horrible investigation. The lawyer that I got assigned, I was lucky in this aspect because he was getting out of the Air Force. And he said to me, Vicki, I don't care if you're gay or not. He said, there's a lot of gay people in the military. He goes, but I'm going to tell you right now, the difference is you have a top secret clearance and they don't. And because you have a top secret clearance, you will go to prison for being a homosexual. And I was like, well, why, why am I going to go to prison? He said, because you're a threat to national security. And if you have a top secret clearance in the military, you're a threat to national security because back on the books, there's still a law back from the Hoover days that says that if you're a homosexuality, you are actually a threat to national security because they think that homosexuals would rather give up their country than be known as being homosexuals. So he said, if they find out that you're guilty, you're going to go to prison for a minimum of five years for kissing a girl. So he said, I'm advising you right now to waive your rights to a discharge board because you're going to be put in a panel in front of five people, three officers, two enlisted. He said, if three of those people think that you're a homosexual, a homosexual, you're going to go to Leavenworth Military Prison for a minimum of five years for being a threat to national security. So he advised me to waive my rights to a discharge board and advised me to put together a packet of information on my behalf. So I gathered all this information from all these people, 
officers, enlisted, everybody who can testify to my character. Well, in the end, thank God he did tell me to do that, because they convicted me of a homosexual act. They never convicted me of being a homosexual, but because someone said that they saw me kissing a girl, they went out and the, the act of me kissing a girl actually got me kicked out of the Air Force and would have put me in prison had I gone before an actual court of uh, military law. So I ended up getting kicked out and my saving grace was bringing back uh, Captain Marie Bunky. It was her decision whether I got an honorable discharge or a dishonorable and she sat me in her office and said, I don't know if you're gay or not, you're very young, I was 20 at the time. She said, but I can't imagine a better airman than you, and the Air Force is actually losing a great person. So she gave me an honorable discharge. And that's actually what happened to me. And I got kicked out. She actually asked me to pick my discharge date, and I could have gone through the New Year's. It was at the end of the year. So I got kicked out on December 27th, 1990, because I didn't want to, I wanted to be able to celebrate my New Year's. And then my mom came and drove out to Washington, packed up all my stuff, and my last memory of the Air Force was freezing cold weather in the middle of the winter with um, a security policeman with his M16 standing over me, with, told, gave me a razor blade and made me scrape my Defar Department of Defense sticker off of the front of my, my car. And that's my last memory of the military for kissing a girl. Lost my top secret clearance, lost all the training, and now look at the state the military's in. For what?